Wait a minute, I hear something. Dr. Boober! What's going on, everybody? It's another episode of Dr. Movie. Hope life is treating you well in the middle of this uh, week that we're calling Bat Crap Crazy. <laughs> and uh, this one's no different, right? We've had some some pretty uh, heavy hitters here recently. But today we're going to talk about a, about a very odd one. Uh, it's actually a Shaw Brothers movie. So if you're familiar with the, the martial arts classics that the Shaw brothers have put out. This is their own version of a horror movie, I guess you'd say. You know, they kind of dabbled with that throughout the 70s, and this one's from 1983. Uh, it says it's a horror-slash-action flick. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that. But uh, it, it's uh, trying to find words to explain. Um, this movie is... Just as difficult as all the other ones. The best way to describe it is if... It's like if the Shaw Brothers approached Lucio Fulci to make them a movie. But they only got Lucio. They didn't bring any of his crew, the special effects guys, any of that stuff. He didn't bring DeRossi or any of those guys. And you got to work with these guys that have never done special effects before. That's kind of the feel I get for this one. Because... They're they're very Fulci esque as far as ideas, but just not. They're a little more cartoony, you know. That's what's interesting about this one. And uh, like I said, uh, let's let's find us a synopsis here. A man gets caught up in the web of fate, Buddhism, and black magic, while seeking revenge for his brother's uh, crippling in Thailand. Yeah, this starts off a a kickboxer movie. Matter of fact. You know, there's a couple of people you think of when you think of, when you say the word kickboxing, right? Especially in the movie world. You think of Jean-Claude Van Damme, and you think of Bolo Young. Well, guess what? Bolo Young is in this movie. It's pretty much your bad guy, adversary, kickboxer guy, right? He plays the same character in every movie. And the movie starts off with these two guys battling it out, and, uh... The other guy wins, but Bolo does a cheap shot at the end, and it and it paralyzes the guy for the rest of his life. And the guy that gets paralyzed has a brother, who's in some bad dealings. I think he's either in in a you know a, like a mob or drug dealing. I don't know. There's there's something that's going bad here, right? And uh, this is right when the fight has just happened. And the brother is being double-crossed by these druggies or whatever it is, this this mob. And it they've got him strung up like they're going to kill him. And then all of a sudden, all the bad guys or all the people that are after him just kind of die. And this guy is hanging upside down and looks. And there's this kind of glowing Buddhist monk standing there with light shining all around him. And... Uh, here's the thing. I watched this movie <laughs> without any subtitles or overdub. So I'm guessing at what's happening here. I did have to look to see if this, this these guys were related. They are. They're supposed to be the brothers, right? And uh, so this monk basically tells him, hey, you got to you gotta change your ways. and Because uh, there's a bigger battle for you to, to fight, right? So... He goes and visits his brother in the hospital, and his brother's like, you know, get my revenge. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing. It's like, does does this brother have a background in kickboxing? Because you don't just become a kickboxer overnight, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, instead of going and training how to be a kickboxer, he decides to go and be a monk in Thailand. And uh, he goes up, they're doing a big presentation to, to Bolo, right? Because he, he's won some kind of championship, and they're giving him a belt. And, uh, you know, a championship belt. Uh-oh, hey, just got some noise there. And uh, <laughs> he uh, 
decides to go, and he keeps seeing this emblem flying around in his house, around, you know, it's, 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 it's this symbol, right? And uh, he's, he's on this boat, and he's going through, I guess, one of the rivers there, going through Thailand, and he sees that emblem on this building, and it's a monastery. So he decides to go in there and become a monk and change his ways, shaves his head, and uh, learns to fight these, the, preparing to fight for the, uh, against these demons, right? This is my interpretation. I'm probably missing something. So he's going through the trainings, and <laughs> he does have this battle with a demon, which is, it's a dude, right? Uh, it starts off with, you see, this, this monk that he saw earlier, the Buddhist monk that was glowing, uh, he kind of gets, sets the wheels in motion for this, because uh, he is fighting this demon and he he I they fight <laughs> and uh he like I guess kills the guy and then this demon bat comes out of the guy's mouth that he defeated and the monk grabs the bat and straps it down and kills the bat and but when it does over in demon land I guess which is this cool statuesque area with a lot of Argento looking lighting on it. There's this crazy demon guy that lives there. And uh when he kills the bat, it it deteriorates one of the, the statues there like he knows that it created something bad. I don't know. It's some kind of defeat thing, right? And there's all kinds of weird stuff that goes on with this with this with him trying to bring the bat back alive and it's just a skeleton and it's trying to walk across the floor and stop motion and the monk comes back in and smashes that and you know it just brings more evil upon them right none of that really matters it's just crazy stuff that you see in this that again it's it's really hard to explain what you see in this movie but there is a battle between you know this 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 new monk right the 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 brother that's changed his ways he goes through all these trainings, and and the reason he's there is because, again, that monk that visited him, which is this dead monk, but they've preserved his body, which, and they've got him in this big pot, kettle, I don't know, and they've built a shrine for it, right? But when this, this guy comes in, and they say, hey, you know, this was prophesied that you were going to come and be a part of this, and here's the proof. They bust open the pot, and dude's body's in there. Which, they they kind of mummified him, but he he kind of looks like, and I don't know why I keep bringing up these words, but he kind of looks like a ghoulie that they've shoved a light bulb up his rear end, and he's like glowing in his chest, but it's all puppeteered looking stuff. Very bizarre. You've got this, you know, mummified corpse puppet that's got a light bulb shining through it, talking to this new monk. Now... I don't know. <laughs> if that doesn't make you go, you know, I I don't know if I want to do this or not. <laughs> Anywho, um, he prepares him for battle, gets him into training, and they put this dude, the new the new monk, in this pot with writing all the inside of it. And all these other monks have these strings that are going to the pot, and they're all holding them, and the the ropes start glowing, and the words start spinning around in in the in the kettle. And he puts his hands on the wall and all the words absorb onto his body and into his body. I have no idea. That's just what happens. Lots of red light, lots of letters. And the letters are crawling all over his body and then they, I guess, dissolve into him. I don't know. I'm just guessing. So loading him for battle, right? So he goes to face this demon guy that we talked about a while ago. Who's just basically this dude with a mustache and a headband. And uh, he's got, I don't know, like a piece of corn stuck on his forehead. And they start battling. And uh, it's all kinds of, you know, this, this demon guy pours chicken blood on these alligator skulls. And these demon bats come out. And when they come out, then dude, the, the monk sits there and he creates that kettle thing again with the words. And the words come out and it's killing all the bats. I'm just telling you, folks. I, I, no explanation why. So that didn't work out for the demon guy. So then he 
makes the the alligator heads come alive. So you got these snapping skulls of alligator, you know, skulls trying to get the the priest. And of course, he takes care of that too. He shoves all these items in their mouth so they can't close their mouth. And then this demon guy decides, all right, I've got another tactic. I'm going to pack this mud around my neck, then take these needles and shove them in my neck and separate my head from my body, and it's going to fly over there and attack this guy. But it's got all these tentacles and stuff that come down out of it. (laughs) It's so bizarre, man. So bizarre. Uh, So, yeah, I mean, you, you get this flying head that separates from the body with all these tentacles wrapped all over the, 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 the Buddhist monk's head. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we got a monk that kind of defeated the demon, right? And, uh, it, it awakens these three other demons. Uh, and they start saying, all right, we got to build a super demon. So they found, they, they've got this body wrapped up in some kind of pod that looks like it's made out of lard, rice and corn pops you know it's it's kind of figureless it's just a shape and they they take an alligator and they kill the alligator flip it upside down they disembowel the alligator and they stick this body in there and they pour a bunch of goop in there and all of a sudden now we got this naked chick with long fingernails that's the new you know undead warrior i guess so, you know, we're going to have to have another showdown, obviously. And, uh, yeah. So the monk, you know, he, he's done his first duty, and he decides to go back home and visit, but he messes up. He messes up his, his clarity by uh, uh, having sex with his girlfriend. So it kind of messes everything up. And then it's also time for him to fight Bolo, because he's had all this training, right, in kickboxing. <laughs> So he's going to defend his brother who's there in, in this big wheelchair with a big head fixture on it to keep him from moving. And he gets in there and there's a bunch of issues, right? Because now these demons are making things happen while he's in the boxing ring or the kickboxing ring. And his eyes, it gets to where he can't see and he see, sees maggots and his eyes are just puffy red and can't see what's going on. Bolo's just kicking his butt all over the place. But then he kind of finds his inner chi or whatever and, you know, starts whipping Bolo and I don't know. It's, it's crazy, man. It's That's why it's on this show. So at this point, our kickboxing hero is like, you know, I kind of slipped there a little bit. I need to get back on the path, right? Because it's just going to bring more doom upon myself because he knows that more demons are coming for him. So he goes back to the, the main monk, you know, the priest. And the priest says, hey, I know what we can do. Let's go to this other uh, shrine where it's just a big face that's on the ground. I mean, it's a big stone face, and these there's like a tree going out, growing out of one of the eyeballs or where the eye sockets is. And down inside of that is this humongous mushroom. And this major priest monk goes down there, rubs some kind of salve <laughs> all over the mushroom, and it makes the mushroom secrete this magic juice. I don't know, I'm guessing here. And he catches the magic juice in this locket that's on a necklace. <laughs> yeah. And uh, here, wear this around your neck. You'll know what to do with it. You know, one of those kind of things, right? <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention. There's this thing about these, I don't know, black magic spiders. Again, that's right. I got the, the Fulci feel in this, right? There's these spiders that... This uh the the first demon that one rips his head off cre- creates this I don't know some kind of demon juice, puts it on the ground and these spiders absorb it, and that's how the the first monk ends up dying. You know you kind of get this in a backstory I guess, and it's it sticks these stingers right in the the priest's eyes while he's asleep or the monk's eyes while he's asleep and that's what kills him right. He's got these big metal stingers in his eyes. Well. Well, we're getting towards the end here where our new monk, who's, you know, I'm guessing he's trying to resurrect the old monk so he can handle and get his revenge for that as well. I don't know. Just trying to figure it out, right? But uh, it comes down to he knows that the the, the undead warrior, the, the naked woman, is near. So he sits down and he takes a knife and he splits his forearm open. 
and pours the magic juice in it that came out of that mushroom. And I'm like, couldn't you just drink it? Because <laughs> he goes through this whole process of digging real deep with his knife and then sewing it back up a la Rambo or, you know, the first first blood movie. And uh, I'm like, dude, just, just chug it, you know? <laughs> it's going to the same place. But apparently this is some kind of, I don't know, magic stuff that he's drinking. So apparently this stuff makes him invulnerable. And yeah, that that's kind of what's happening here. <laughs> but yeah, and, and during the battle with the, the undead warrior, then all of a sudden, um, I guess the original priest, the, the ashes of him, like pull back together and he becomes, you know, mega priest again i don't know but now with like it's kind of like gandalf right he's came back from the dead and he's like more powerful and he kind of wipes out not only the 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 warrior from you know, the undead warrior but all the other black magicians too they're all dead now and uh then those spider stingers protrude themselves the, the, out of his eyes and you know there you go and uh, then he goes back to Thailand as a priest, and, I don't know, uh, he just becomes an immortal being, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, that's pretty much it. I, <laughs> this, one's, uh, this one's a hard one. It's, it really is, because, one, it's, it's a cultural thing, right? There's probably things in here that make sense to people that, you know, are from Thailand or whatever, and... None of this makes any sense, man. But there's a lot of gross stuff in it. Like, you know, when they bring the, the, the undead warrior alive, when they have the body laying there, the, the group of demons, like, start chewing up food and mixing it together in their mouths, and then they'll pass it to each other, and they keep chewing it, and they're, they're eating things. You're like, yeah, they, you know, like a banana peel, and they eat something off of a chicken. Actually, I think it's something that came off a rooster, if you know what I mean. Uh... And they put all that together, and then they mix it up, and then they pour it into the the undead warrior's mouth, and that's what brings her alive. Which, if that don't bring you alive, I don't know what will. <laughs> anyway, folks, uh, like I said, these these movies are here for a reason, and I don't know what the reason is, but they made it to this week. And uh, it's hard to find one any crazier than this, because it does totally go off the rails. And I'm sure there's some subtext here that I'm missing that's a cultural thing. But overall, this is one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my life. And, uh, you know, give it a shot. See what you think. If you've liked any of these other movies from this week, you can't skip this one. I can tell you that right now. I'm going to give this a, weirdly enough, a 4 out of 5. Because th there's no way you can turn this off. You've got to stick with it, right? Because you're just like, what? what's going to happen next, right? It's one of those movies. So there you go, folks. That's it for this one. Uh, let me know what you think. If you're a fan of this one, would love to hear about it. And uh, till then, folks, till next time, we will check you later. Dr. Boobie!